I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm here to look at a car, and if I can get it running, I'm planning on taking it to the Flatwater Austin Healy Club's British Car Show tomorrow. Right now, I'm just waiting for a friend of mine to get here. He's been keeping the car here. This was owned by a friend of ours who is actually the founder of the Flatwater Austin Healy Club. But I'll get to more of that later. And this is what I've come here to see. This is one of Jim Danielson's MGC GTs. If you spent much time at British car shows here in the Midwest or some of the big national MG shows, you probably have run into Jim. Unfortunately, Jim died about a year ago. He was driving his MGC Roadster across I-80. He was going through Iowa back to Nebraska when he was struck by another car which turned him around, flipped the car over, he hit another truck, and unfortunately, it killed him. I had known Jim for about 15 years. He collected many British cars. He had a bug-eyed Sprite, other MGs. And I'm betting that if you were at a British car show where there were a bunch of MGs, you probably ran into him. I'm lucky enough that I was offered this car. His family is keeping a couple of the cars. This car hasn't run in a year, and tonight I'm going to take a look at it, see if I can get it running and driving, and then I'm going to take it to the Flatwater Austin Healy Show tomorrow, which is a club that Jim had founded. Let's take a look inside. Let's get the back seat out of here. Back here, looks like we have a fuel pump. I hope we don't need that. Got a original BMC radio. Some jumper cables. This is a cover for the battery tray. And we've got a grill badge from the MGC register. This car does have one 12 volt battery. Over here we can see an aftermarket fuel pump has been put on. Looks like we have a fuel shutoff valve in here too. Let's take a look inside. Okay, we have an aftermarket speedometer. This is a speed hut gauge. A little receiver for the GPS unit is right there. So the speedometer works off of GPS. It's always accurate. It doesn't matter what the rear end ratio, it doesn't matter what tires you have, the speedometer is always going to be correct. Down here, looks like we have an extra stock for some kind of aftermarket cruise control system. There's a blanking plate where the radio should be, so maybe he was thinking about putting an original stereo into the car. Looks like down here we have one of the inverters for the backlighting on that speed hut gauge just hanging down. So the wiring needs a bit tidying up. Okay, this is a three liter inline six. This is derived from the Austin Healey motor, but it actually is seven main bearings. This is a much better engine than the Austin Healey 3000 had. In fact, these MGCs were supposed to be the Austin Healey Mark IV, but disagreements between Austin and Donald Healey prevented the car from ever wearing an Austin Healey badge. Looking down here by the alternator, we have some really melted wires there. So it's probably better to disconnect these wires. You can see it's melting the loom way back here too. Get these disconnected from the alternator so that things don't get any worse than this. Oh yeah, look at how melted that is. I'd say something definitely went wrong inside the alternator. This loom right here is only one wire, but we need to worry about whether it melted into the insulation of the other wires here. So I'm gonna start unwrapping this electrical tape. I'll check back in a second. Looks like I got really lucky. It only burned into the electrical tape. 
and it did not burn into the side of the rest of this wiring. The only one of these wires that I'm leaving connected is that which goes to the thermostat for the temperature gauge. But I will need to tie these up in a safe place, especially with that terminal there exposed. We'll need to wrap that up with electrical tape, make sure it doesn't short out on anything. I've taped those connectors up and taped the wires out of the way now. I think I'm ready to check all the fluids and then see if it starts. Looks like the oil is down a quart and a half. Luckily I brought some with me, so I'll get that added. There was plenty of coolant in it, and it looks like the brake and clutch levels are just fine. Now let's connect the battery, see what happens. Everything looks good. The ignition out, whoa. Got wipers going, all kinds of things. Okay, you can hear the fuel pump. Sounds like the fuel is up at the carbs now. Better check for leaks real quick. Fuel pump is still ticking away. But this being an aftermarket one, I don't think it stops ticking. I think it ticks all the time. Unlike the original SU units, I don't see any leaks up here. Pull the choke out. Let's see if it starts. The engine does run, and I have an idea on how to get by without an alternator. First thing I'm going to do is connect up my battery charger. I'll put these on in a way that they can sit down inside of here, and I can still put the cover on top of this. So I'm going to install the cover, have the wires coming out of it, and my battery charger will be sitting on top of the cover. Battery covers back on. I have the wires for the battery charger coming out there. Now I can put the seat back on. Okay, the seat's back in place and I have my battery cable running along there and into the back hatch. Now back here, I have my Blue Eddy EB55 and I can use that to power the battery charger. That way this can work as the alternator for the car and this will last quite a long time, especially if I'm not using the headlights on the car. Now, not only are we charging our battery, but we can use this to run everything on the car as well. the gas is pretty old of course it hasn't had gas in a year so you would definitely expect it to be but the gas could have been in there for quite a bit longer too but runs and drives so i'll get to the hotel i'll get it cleaned up and then we'll get it over to the car show tomorrow so next morning the car made it to the hotel let's get over to the car show I charged the Blue Eddy up last night, so I'll get my charging system going. Okay, this doesn't automatically start, so I will have to hit it every time. There it goes. Now I'm ready to go.
cars are starting to show up now. They gave me a spot where they can show off Jim's old car. Just waiting for more cars to get here. It's lunchtime now and most people are at lunch, so I think it's a good time to walk around and take a look at the cars. Let's start with this Lotus Esprit. This is a 25th anniversary Lotus Esprit V8. Look at the neat pattern and door panels there. Does have a sunroof. First in line here, we have an MGA Coupe. Aftermarket valve cover. This is a gorgeous looking car. I'm not sure that this color was originally available, but it definitely works with this blue. Next we have a rubber bumper, MGB, but that is definitely not an MGB engine. So it looks like it's a V6 configuration. The intake there says 3.4 liters, but I'm not sure whose engine this is. Still looks very original on the inside. Now we've got a couple more MGBs. This one has a Weber downdraft conversion. Looks like they're going for power. They also have the headers heat wrapped. Then we have an MG midget. Very interesting intake manifold here. We're running a bigger SU carburetor, an alternator conversion. Beside it, a rubber bumper midget. And we have a TR6. This one still has the smog pump equipped. Next, we have a TR3. The owner of this car told me that he was on his way to Galena, the big Triumph show d done by the Vintage Triumph Register that I went to last month. However, he didn't make it, but he is here today. And then we've got a Series 2 Sunbeam Alpine. This one also has a downdraft Weber conversion. It's a really nice looking car. These early Alpines have the big tail fins. The tail lights not straight up and down like the Series 4 and 5 Alpines are. And we've got a rubber bumper MG Midget with a very unusual hood bulge. Got a bug-eyed Sprite. No front bumper. They've changed the master cylinders to dual master cylinders. And they have an alternator conversion. Inside looks bone stock, except for that tachometer. You would have to change to a different tack because if you're not using an original generator with a tack drive, there's no way to get the tack on your bug eye. Next is an MGA. That's interesting, the white valve cover. Looks like they've upgraded the fuse block to use normal type fuses. Looks like they've painted the steering wheel white as well. And they've even done a custom accent on the speaker grill, changing that to white as well. And we've got a big Healy. It's a 3000 Mark III. Looks very original. And this is, looks like a very nice unrestored car. Next up is a Jaguar Mark IX. This car has a 3.8 liter engine, just like the early E-types. Looks like the seats have been redone, and this one is left-hand drive. The exterior of the car looks original and unrestored. Now we've got another MGB. This is a very unusual color. 
Not sure if I've seen this before. This here says that it's a color, I mean, sandy beige. It is quite a striking color. Like I said, I don't recall ever seeing one in this color before. Then at the end of this row, we have a Triumph Spitfire 1500. Starting down the next row, we have a very beautiful Triumph GT6. The outside of the car looks great. Engine bay is unrestored, but that's okay. Why not use your cars? Here's a look at the dashboard and Triumph tends to put these emblems in a lot of their cars, celebrating the SCCA wins that they've had. And we've got another Triumph TR6. Jaguar E-Type Convertible. This is a Series 2, so it has the larger 4.2 liter inline 6, triple SU carburetors. Seats look very original, but still in usable shape. Next to that is this gorgeous E-Type. This isn't the rarest car here, but this is my favorite of the show. Very nicely restored. This one is a 1965. It also has the 4.2 liter engine. I thought this was really funny when this pulled in. This is not the MGC that I brought. What are the chances that another MGC GT will show up, but it's also in primrose yellow. Same as mine. This one is almost identical, except this one does not have an overdrive unit. And this one has chrome wire wheels where both the cars should have painted wire wheels. Next up is a car that looks like a Lotus 7, but this is actually a Westfield. This car was built in 1985. Two very big Weber carburetors. Next up is a absolutely stunning MGA. This paint looks flawless. Interior has been redone as well. A lot of things that are not original on this car, but it presents itself extremely well. Next car is a Roots Group product. This is fairly rare in, here in the United States. This is a Singer Gazelle. The Singer lines were positioned between the Hillman and the Sunbeam marks. So the front end has a very Sunbeam look to it. You can tell this is from the Roots Group just by looking at it. And then here's my MGC, cleaned up real nice. I had to clean the car in the dark, but when I came out this morning, it looked all right. They gave me a prominent spot, as this might be the first show that Jim has missed. And him being the founder of this club, they wanted it on display. Now we've got a Morris Mini. Engine tag is missing, so we can't tell exactly what size this engine is. Has the brake booster. This one is right-hand drive. Has the Cooper S dual fuel tanks in the rear. And we've got another MGA 1600. And we've got a bug-eyed Sprite. This one, the bonnet has been converted to flip the opposite way. The heater's been deleted. I'm not sure what the panic button does. Maybe that's a horn for the passenger. Not sure. Next is a TR250. These have the TR6 engine 
with a TR4 body. Of course, all the TR250s were carbureted. The fuel injected models available in the UK were called the TR5. The easy way to tell a TR250 is from the stripes on the nose. And this one is also equipped with overdrive. This car is another one of my favorites of the show. This is a 100M Austin Healey. A couple of the 100M changes are the louvered hood. You have different carburetors. You have this air box, which draws in fresh air from a hose up there. This one has the fold down windshield, has a really interesting dash cluster down here where they've added a clock an ammeter and a voltmeter. They also have seats with ventilated rear backrests. This is just an absolutely stunning car. And then we've got another TR3. Looks like this car is just maintained. Looks like a great car to just take out for a drive whenever you want and not worry about it. everybody for coming today we had about 36 cars so that's uh half of what we expected but that's good but we've been expecting more cars than that since uh jim originally had a lot to do with putting this together back in the day as the founding president he always wanted to get to 100 and one time we got to about 80 but uh, that's not today so steve's right there steve has taken uh the famous Jim Danielson, MGC Roadster back to Ames, Iowa. Steve has an extensive collection of cars over there and he'll take care of it. We're gonna do best to show first. And best to show goes to Sam Bryant with his 55 MGA. Best to show was the 55 MGA. Well, I had a great day today here in Lincoln, Nebraska. They didn't get as many cars as they had hoped for. But thanks for watching, and if you want to see more like this, comment below and click subscribe.